what you're looking at here is actually not the dashboard itself, okay? But you're actually looking at a very, very, very picky customer. So we got our pieces hanging up in the paint booth. Okay, there's our lower dash. Get a good look at it. And you can now see that that has been sanded down to 600 wet. Okay, it has been finally sanded down. And then we got our upper dash. Now, you see where I had to sand through the primer here, okay, because there were imperfections. Okay. In the primer, so what I got to do is I got to seal, put sealer on this, and I'll go ahead. Let's walk around the back side. I'll go ahead and seal the back side as well. Put sealer. That's the sealer we're using. DP 50 LF. This is non-sandable primer. Okay, you can't really. You can sand it lightly, but it will not actually sand because it'll start gumming up on you. And I use 402 hardener, that's the fast hardener. They actually sell a 401 that you have to let sit for 30 to 45 minutes before you use it. So we got our gun ready to spray. I've cleaned everything down with DX330 Acrylic Clean. That's wax and grease remover. Okay, just what you see right there. DX330, that's the best there is. It's PPG brand. Everything that I use, 90% of all the paint supplies I use or PPG okay so let me get that sealer on it we're gonna see what it looks like okay now we got our pieces up in uh, epoxy primer as you can see right here okay our next step is to take our custom mixed okay which was a pain in the ass to mix if you notice there's not even a freaking label on it because what it has on it I'm gonna show you. Of course, that's Deltron. We're using Deltron DBC base coat. But what it has on it is my custom formula. Okay. Each individual toner, the weight as you mix it up, the different weights that you use to make this color. So that took me almost two and a half weeks to precisely get right. So our 1955 Buick customer will be happy now. Of course, there's a little dot, okay, a little green dot. Okay, so if you look at it, and I don't want to drip it on my camera. If you look at it, there's our green, 1955 Buick, custom green that we're going to be using. Now, the customer did want to get a full gallon of that so he can have extra in case he has to paint something else because he owns several of these cars. This is not should paint thoroughly, as you can see right here. Okay. And always use a strainer. Okay? You always want to use a strainer on your paint. And I don't know if you can see this when I bring it up there, but if you look in there, you can see micro fine little pieces of trash that were in the paint and that will actually go through the gun and will splatter on our paint job and that's something that we don't want it makes you a lot more nervous okay to do a job like this because all you're thinking about is not messing it up so I finally come to the conclusion when I do something like this fuck it okay that's the attitude you gotta have okay it's gonna come out nice because if you sit there and you're nervous and you're spraying it and you're thinking, oh my God, I can't get a piece of trash in it. Oh my God, if I get a small minute run in it, you know, I'll have to redo the whole thing. Then that's when you're gonna fucking get one, okay? So the best thing to do is just be calm, take your time and paint it just like you were painting a scuff and paint paint job. And don't fucking worry about it. Just to paint these few pieces that I'm gonna paint today, 
It was gonna take me approximately three to four hours to paint it, just the paint alone, okay? Because that's how long I'm gonna have to wait in between coats, because I gotta put a total of six, count that, six coats of paint and clear on our two pieces that is taking up my whole paint booth. So I've been working on this little project here since last week just to get these two little pieces painted. So let's hope they turn out right and they turn out nice. So let's get the paint on them, then we'll come back and get our clear. And hopefully our 1955 Buick will be a happy customer, not a picky customer. That's one coat of DBC base coat paint. I used a whole quart just to paint those two pieces in there and put it on where it covers. It's very, very important that you get very good coverage when you're painting with base coat. Do not put it on very thick because what will happen is you will get orange peel in your paint. Take your time. Keep approximately 12 to 14 inches away from your piece while you're painting with your gun. And keep the uh, air pressure and the uh, volume of your paint at an equalization. And uh, that is how you take care of a 1955 Buick picky customer. All right. If you look real close, everything is painted green. Okay, it's a nice gloss going down it. We've got a glare on it as well. But everything has been painted. Factory original Buick. Now once again, I had to match this paint, custom mix this paint to what the customer wanted due to the fact that he wanted precisely the exact same color as the rest of all his other 1955 Buicks that he owns. So we painted it inside and out, just like I promised. And it looks very, very clean. I've put two coats of clear on the inside of all the dash. And you can see the gloss that it has. And that's PPG clear coat, which is very durable, very thick, and very fucking expensive. But anyway, and I've got three full wet coats. So this is a very, very big time consuming job. It's a very, very tedious and strenuous job doing this type of work. This is not like painting a car by no means. And when you get a customer like this, <laughs> it even makes it harder. Luckily, our 1955 Buick customer is a very, very nice guy. And I would say he's become a very good friend. But to make things short, friends are no friends. Business is business. And it has to be done right. So. This is Pete. And I'm over here at Southwest Rod and Custom. And that's just one more, one more example of what the fuck goes on over here at Southwest Rod and Custom. So, take it easy, take it slow, and most of all, take it any freaking way you can get it these days. I'll see you later. Bruno's inside taking a rest. He's been out working hard. And it's time for me to get down the road. It's uh, 6 o'clock at night. So I've been working on that crap all freaking day. And yesterday. And last week. So I'll see you later. Take it easy.